Faraday's law is the first of Maxwell's equations and probably one of the two most important. <coughs> Faraday's law says that if you uh, say we have some electrical conductor here, I've drawn some square loop of wire, and passing through the interior of this loop is some total flux phi. So we have some magnetic flux lines passing through the interior of this loop. <coughs> Faraday's law says that a changing flux or changing total phi induces a voltage around the loop of wire. So here we have, uh, the, the loop is not shorted or closed. We have some, uh, we bring out these terminals and if phi changes with time, then a voltage is induced around the loop and that voltage is given by the derivative of the flux. Or the, <coughs> yeah. Um, since flux, if, if the flux is uniform, we can say the total flux is the flux density times the area of the loop. So we have some total cross-sectional area here. So we can substitute this into that and get this, that the total voltage induced is the area of the loop times the derivative of the flux density. So the voltage is related to the flux or the flux density through Faraday's law. Linz's law is connected to Faraday's law. <coughs> And we're going to come back to Linz's law later. Linz's law is, or one way to think about Linz's law is that it is the mechanism that leads to eddy currents and to the proximity effect and causes all, wreaks all kinds of havoc and losses in our high frequency uh, magnetics. So what Linz's law says <coughs> is that if we take the same loop and short it, so in, you know, a second ago we had these conductors coming out and we measured a voltage. <coughs> now we're going to short the conductors. And what Linz's law says is that if you have some flux passing through the interior of this loop and the flux changes, then that flux will induce a current around the shorted loop that will act in a way to counteract the changing flux. And if effectively, the currents will flow to try to keep the flux through the interior of the loop constant and not change. <coughs> so really, if you have an AC flux going through the loop that's driven by some other source, that AC flux will induce currents to circulate around this loop and make an opposing flux or a flux that opposes the change in phi. So total phi plus phi prime tries to stay constant. And effectively what happens is that the voltage that was induced now with a shorted loop causes a voltage drop across the impedance of the conductor around the loop in its resistance and its inductance. <coughs> that leads to a current uh, of the proper magnitude to counteract the change in flux. Um, so we're going to see that because core magnetic core materials are electrical conductors also, fluxes passing through the, the magnetic material induces currents inside the magnetic material itself called eddy currents. And the, the more changing flux you have inside the magnetic material, uh, the more eddy currents you get that cause, that try to counteract the AC flux. And those eddy currents flow through the resistance of the wire and make loss. So it's the primary loss mechanism or mechanism for core loss. It's called eddy current loss. Not only that, but you get, you know, when you have wind, a winding near a core or around a core, um, it has magnetic fields from the adjacent conductors and you get eddy currents induced in the conductors themselves, the wire itself. And that leads to the skin effect and the proximity effect that make eddy currents inside the windings and cause loss there as well. Okay, we'll be coming back to this a little later. Okay, Ampere's law. Um, <coughs> what 
Ampere's law relates the magnetic field H inside a core to the current in the winding. And what Ampere's law says is that you take a path, and a good path to take is the closed path that the magnetic flux lines take flowing around the, the interior of the core. So here's some core that's a, you know, topologically it's circular. <coughs> um, and it has magnetic field and magnetic flux lines going around the interior of the core. And Ampere's law says that if you integrate H dot DL around the path that the, the flux lines take, what you get is the total current that passes through the interior of the path. Okay, so here the path is taken to be the path that an average flux line takes around the inside of the core. And the interior of the path, then, is the current um, <coughs> is the current, basically, that passes through the hole in the middle of the core, or, or what we call the window of the core. So <coughs> if you have one turn of wire carrying a current I, then the uh, you have that current I passing through the hole in the middle of the core, and the right-hand side is I. If you put in turns, then you, the total, each, each turn will go through the interior of the core, and we'll have a total or net current of N times I passing through the interior, and Ampere's law will give us N I. If you have multiple windings, you have to add up the amp turns of all the windings <coughs> to, to find this right-hand side term. So Ampere's law then relates the current, in, the, the net current flowing through the hole in the middle of the core to this H dot DL. Um, if H is uniform or constant going all the way around the core, then H dot DL turns out to simply be H times the distance around the core, what's called the magnetic path length, LM. So we get H times LM is equal to the total current in the middle of the core, and H is related to I. Incidentally, this integral also is, is the magnetomotive force F. It's the integral of H around the core. So that's like you know, our magnetomotive force or magnetic potential or the analog of voltage. And what that effectively says is that currents, <coughs> excuse me, currents and windings are like source, they're sources of magnetomotive force. So they're like voltages in an electrical circuit. <coughs>